The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Uh, Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, because the DMs are not encrypted. So one of the first, you know, one of the things that we're about to release uh, is the ability to encrypt your DM. Hopefully coming out later this month, uh, but no later than next month, uh, is the ability to toggle encryption on, on or off. So if you, if you ha are in a conversation you think is sensitive, you can just toggle encryption on, and then no one on Twitter can see wh what you're talking about. They, they could put a gun to my head and I couldn't, I couldn't tell. Twitter's new boss, Elon Musk, says he is strengthening privacy settings on the app after revealing the app used to have access to private user data, <laughs> and that includes direct messages. Outkick host Tommy Lahren joins us now. Tommy, as you've been listening, we've talked a lot about the scary aspects of the AI part of this interview. How scary was the Twitter part of this interview? Yeah, who needs AI when you have just regular old employees that want to collude with the government to spy on the American people, right? I mean, they've already got that one handled. But I don't know what's more concerning. The fact that former Twitter employees, we hope they're former, wanted to share this information with the government or that the government wanted this information. That should be concerning all the way around. I'm not sure which one is worse, but I'll tell you this. The fact that our government and those at Twitter felt the need to look into DMs, to censor, to shadow ban, to monitor the American people to the extent that they did, thank goodness for the Twitter files and Elon Musk, we now know what our government has been up to, and we now know how concerned they are with the actions of the American people. But that leads me to my next question. Question, Todd and Ashley, why were they then not able to rid child pornography and exploitation off the platform? If they really are so concerned with guidelines and safety and terms of use, why not rid the thing that's actually the most damaging to the American population, that child exploitation, that child porn? Why were they not able to tackle that issue? It's a rhetorical question, but it's one that I hope most Americans will think about, even on the left, because it's a question we should all care about. You know, you bring up such a good point. If they're so concerned about one aspect, why not the other? And why not put all of their energy into the, the safety of children, for example, like you bring up? But we do have to get to this, Tommy. Democrat Congressman Hank Johnson is being torched by the mother of a murder victim after he labeled her and the other witnesses as props. Listen. The Republican witnesses who have used their time to criticize District Attorney Bragg have served as props in a MAGA Broadway production. I would challenge this, this gentleman, whatever his name is, okay? Hank Johnson. Hank Johnson, to step one foot in the hood. He is a rich black man that's telling poor black men that they're props and that the crime and the things that they're experiencing, it's, it's, it's not as bad as they think that they are. Your thoughts, Tommy, on all of this? Well, I could have said it better myself, but I'm going to attempt to add to it. Listen, this is the Democrat ploy. They used it in the midterms, and somehow it was successful. They're going to continue to use it until it's not, trying to make crime seem like it's a figment of mega imagination, trying to connect the two, that if you're a Trump supporter, then you're the only one that sees crime as a problem in blue Democrat-run cities. So I don't know if it's going to work for them again in 2024. I didn't think it was going to work for them in the midterms, but I'll tell you this. None of this matters. These field hearings are not going to matter if Republicans and the National Republican Committee does not get active in these local and state races, especially these DA races, if we want to get rid of crime, quite frankly, that is where we're going to have to put our energy. So all of it helps. It's great to expose the victims, the witnesses, the families, and to have them tell their story. It's powerful. I commend Jim Jordan and others on the House Judiciary for doing that. But if we really want to take care of crime beyond just that, we're going to have to get active in these races where it really matters. No more Soros-funded DAs running roughshod over these communities. It's an important point. I would just add, we had Madeline on the show mm -hmm. in this seat yesterday. And for Hank Johnson to say that about a grieving mother, it's abhorrent. He should be ashamed. Let's end on a positive. Shiffy Schiff and other California Dems getting roasted for this Bud Light photo op tweeted by Congressman Ted Lieu. You can't make up the ridiculousness. Tommy, your quick <laughs> thoughts.
Well, Ted Lieu used to be my congressman when I lived in the hellhole that is California. So I just laugh at this. Let California Democrats drink Bud Light if that makes them feel like they've really done something. I think that they're entirely missing the point. They're not the actual customer base. And I think Bud Light knows that it's not Schiff and Ted Lieu and the Democrats that are causing them to hemorrhage billions right now. So go ahead, drink your Bud Light. The rest of us, we quite frankly don't care. Yeah. Bud Light acknowledged that they messed up. They taking it as a loss. It's like those four are wearing the team that lost the Super Bowl wearing their jersey proudly. <laughs> it's odd. Tommy, thank you so much. Thanks, Tommy. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.